I got one hour of sleep because I was staying up playing Hades all night. Hi, I'm Scott the Miniature Maniac, and today we're going to do TMM on the Skelly Boy start to finish. What up, Mini Family? If you haven't been a viewer of the channel for a long time, you may not recognize this series. But I'm going to paint a portion of this model from start to finish, removing none of the footage so that you can see the entire process. Let's get started. We got a lovely skeleton boy here from the Games Workshop range. We're going to paint this axe head with TMM, and we're going to start with a base coat of Abyssal Blue. Need some more water in my wet palette here. Sometimes if your palette is a little bit dry, you have to give it some time to soak in. You may put a lot of water in and feel like that's a ton of water, but then after like 30 seconds, it kind of gets absorbed by the sponge. So give it some time. I'm using Abyssal Blue as a base coat here because it's nice and matte, and paint sticks really well to matte paint. And that's kind of one of the biggest challenges with TMM paint is that it's by nature pretty glossy. Uh, so it doesn't stick very well when you're trying to blend. So we want to give it as much of a head start, much of a helping hand as we possibly can. I am not reaching for my cup of water very often. And that's because I like to operate in like a six inch sphere. I don't like to reach too far away at any point in the painting process. If I have a longer break, I may stop and rinse my brush out and kind of take stock of where we are in the miniature. But for the most part, I'm kind of all operating in this little area right here. Now I'm going to mix in some AK Interactive Gunmetal into this Abyssal Blue to start to get some highlights on this thing. Some of you may be a little bit concerned about me putting metal pigments on my wet palette like it's going to spread around and contaminate all my paint. It doesn't work like that. You can watch this video just to prove that fact. I've been a huge fan of using AK Interactive's metal paints lately. And a big reason because of that is because they're just so stable on a wet palette. A lot of metallic paints will split a ton on a, a wet palette. They're getting a little bit too overhydrated or they don't like the, the water medium very much. And so this paint, this paint kind of stays rock solid. It's pretty awesome. I've been happy with it lately uh, because of that. I'm covering up the majority of the uh, Abyssal Blue paint here, kind of just keeping uh, some paint around in these deep pock marks and also at the very top edge of this axe here. I think just one layer of that mix is probably good and then we'll start getting into um, true TMM paints here with no acrylic paints mixed in. I don't really know if uh, what I'm doing at this stage is going to end up looking good at all. Um, painting for me is very much so a discovery process. Uh, while I am painting, I am uh, reacting to what's on the model. I am figuring out whether or not the choices that I'm making are uh, worth anything or if they're just trash. If you like Skelly Boys, you're going to love today's sponsor, my good friend Jeremy from Black Magic Craft. You all know Jeremy from his amazing terrain videos on YouTube. What you don't know about Jeremy is that he spends his free time painting minis. <laughs> We've converted him, guys. Easy. This love for minis and his history of D&D led him to explore the world of miniature war games, ending in him making his own skirmish game chock full of every design choice and game mechanic you'd expect a metalhead with a terrain bend to fit into a rule set. In Idols of Torment, now on Kickstarter, you take control of an order, which is a varied group of demon-like creatures called idols, of which there are eight different options with unique playstyles and designs available in STL format for 3D printing. With these demon creatures, you are attempting to reclaim the souls of the lost, an NPC in this game that he has on sprue plastic models for. During the course of a game, you can turn, create, and delete whole terrain features. You can battle the opposing player's order, and all the while chasing down the lost to drink up their delicious souls. 
For the 150 Kickstarter special backer pledge tier, you get a PDF, a hardcover rule book, cards, plastic minis and game tokens, and 3D printable STLs for every model of all the orders and additional game pieces. Also, if you want to try before you buy, Jeremy released a new idol available for free via one of his Kickstarter updates. Looking a little vampiric. <laughs> You can find a link to the campaign in the description, as well as a video of Jeremy and JP, his design partner, running through a game. All right, back to Skelly Boy. A good place to start in terms of making things look reflective is kind of just doing the opposite of what you would normally do um, with highlighting stuff, AKA pushing the highlight toward the bottom of objects as opposed to the top of objects. And so right now you can see me, I'm pushing paint toward the bottom of this ax head here to get a highlight um, down here instead of at the top. Same with this ax head, the flat of the ax head. I'm pushing a lot of that paint down toward the bottom here and not so much toward the top. Really what I'm doing is I'm following an approach that's very similar to non-metallic metal. I'm just doing it with TMM paints, which stands for true metallic metals, if you've been curious up until this point. Okay, we're getting a little bit brighter here. Uh, I think I'm gonna start using a, another color, starting to highlight inside these areas that I've made for myself with a, a brighter color from AK Interactive called Natural Steel. In fact, while I'm here, I'll just put two more paints on my palette so I don't have to stop to do this while I'm painting. I don't really like to interrupt the flow state of painting very much. I prefer to just keep painting and having the paint already on my palette definitely is helpful. That's part of the reason why I don't like to reach out into my cup while I'm painting either. I want to get right back into the mix as soon as I have kind of like broken away from the model. I don't want to spend too much time away from it. I know that sounds artsy and fartsy, but that really does make a big difference. Okay, now with some natural steel, we'll just start to build up more highlight toward the bottom here. You may be curious why I'm using blue to shade the silver. Uh, it's a pretty standard color to pick for silver, but furthermore, I kind of see silver as the, the white or the gray of the metallic world. And what that means is, is that it is able to take really any color as a shadow. You could, you could shade silver with purple, you could shade it with green, you could shade it with uh, red, you could do whatever you wanted and it, it would look pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I, I just picked blue because uh, I think it looks nice. Still doing a pretty scratchy approach here. Uh, to give more shape to the accent here, I'm gonna just do a quick edge highlight along the top of the, the blade here. Kinda just allows me to take stock of what things look like if we're, if we're going in the right direction. I mean, I'll say this right now, if you were just speed painting an army or if you were, you know, just painting an army casually and you weren't like, super try harding at this stage. Um, you could just slap on like an edge highlight like I'm doing like right here. Uh, and then just, just call it quits and be done. Uh, Cause this looks, honestly from five feet, that would look banging. Just trying to keep a lot of that dark shadow available. It had the tendency to make things look very shiny when there are huge swings in contrast across the uh, across the miniature. Got a little cut here in the axe. Want to make sure we edge highlight that, and we also want to make sure we edge highlight the bevel of the axe here. I'm not getting into reintroducing shadow just yet, but you'll see what I mean by showing off the bevel of the axe when we start to reintroduce some uh, shadow. This part of his axe seems to have ridges on all the, 
the major axes, so I'm trying to make sure that I'm accenting those appropriately. Again, I'm still making pretty wide brush strokes here, not getting anything that's too specific just yet. I think I left behind too much shadow in that area, so I'm going to come back in first with my mix, because it looks like pure shadow. And then once that's squared away, I'll come back in with some more of the darker silver from AK Interactive. I won't go all the way up the axe hand. I'll go like three-fourths the way up. Kind of blend that in nicely. Okay, cool. It's looking pretty good. Let's uh, bump up the crown chest one more time with the highlight um, using the brightest silver from AK Interactive, which is called, you guessed it, silver. Come to daddy. You might wonder why I'm highlighting down here. Um, that's because the, uh, the surface of the earth or whatever uh, surface this guy is standing on is going to reflect light into the bottom of that axe. And this is one of the characteristics of a metallic surface is that because it's so shiny and shimmery, it reflects even the weakest of light sources, in this case, the reflection off of the earth. It's not going to be as bright as, say, the reflections from a sun, um, but when something's that shimmery, it's kind of hard to detect much of a difference. I'm going to make sure that uh, I'm still edge highlighting the bevel of the axe here. One thing else that I really like about these AK Interactive paints is they just edge highlight really good. I find that a lot of uh, Team M paints can sometimes just not stick down to the model very well. And these ones kind of crush it. They, uh, they stick down really nicely. Just hitting the bottoms of these little pock marks to give it a little bit of a bright twinkle. His light would catch on that edge as well. At some points you may feel like you're kind of like running over all your shadow work and that's totally normal. Don't worry about that. We'll come back in with some more shadow. And in fact, we're gonna do that right now. I'm gonna grab just straight up abyssal blue, but I'm gonna water it down like quite a bit, maybe like three parts water to one part uh, paint. Um, and I'm gonna start to reintroduce some shadow here that we kind of obliterated. But uh, I'm gonna start with some pretty diluted paint and then I'm gonna dab it off um, on my paper towel, have it soak up a little bit. And then we're gonna start to push paint uh, where we want it. And don't worry about potentially adding too much shadow back in. This is a very, uh, organic pushing and pulling process. So you can definitely add more highlight back in if you feel like you uh, you were too aggressive with the shadow. I'm gonna grab some full opacity uh, abyssal blue here so that I can have some more accuracy and some more opacity. And kind of really shove it all the way up in that corner right there. I just ate the paint off my brush because I'm a fucking heathen. This triangular shape that we're seeing here at the top of the axe, it continues into the tip right here, but it's sliced off right there by that just sculpting detail. But I want to continue this dark shadow all the way up into that tip. That'll be uh, a really cool looking uh, painting choice. So I'm going to paint that tip kind of half with abyssal blue, and then I'll come back in with an edge highlight to uh, reintroduce the uh, the highlight and really sharpen up and make that tiny little area very small. In fact, let's just do that right now. Hit the edge on one side, hit the edge on the other side. And let's make that even smaller. I don't necessarily know where like the bevel begins on like the tippity tip tip of this axe head. 
And this is kind of where sculpting with paint like starts. Um, you can uh, kind of choose how tiny uh, that you want this triangle to be. And basically, I'm just going to keep like sneaking up on, on it until it's like sufficiently tiny. I kind of want the uh, the bevel of the axe to have more of a dramatic edge highlight. And so what I'll do is I'll start to come back in with some more of that diluted abyssal blue and kind of like push it against the edge of the bevel here. Maybe we need some paint with a little bit more opacity. So we're kind of like halfway in between a base coat and a glaze right now. And I'm just going to paint an actual line along this bevel. And I kind of want like a triangular highlight. I'm going to grab some of this middle silver and kind of like push this highlight up into this triangle. It's always kind of challenging to paint a metallic flat surface um, and so right now what I'm doing is just like trying to to make the most of a flat surface here kind of give it shape give it some interest because otherwise it is kind of just boring I'm gonna come back in with some of this mixture of abyssal blue and silver and kind of further suss this blend out more paint eating I'm sorry I should be better about that my apologies I'm not sorry I don't really like the shadow that I've uh, created for myself right here. Not a big fan of that. I don't think it looks very good. So I'm gonna try something else. I'm gonna to, uh, eh, maybe I just need this uh, part to be a little bit smaller. There's something about it that I don't like and we're gonna figure it out. Uh, part of the issue sometimes for me is that an edge highlight is just too thick. It's just too much of a chonk. You know, you need, sometimes you just need that stuff to be a little bit smaller. Uh, so let's, uh, let's try that. Let's try to make the uh, edge high that runs along the bevel of the axe just a little bit thinner and then see if that works. And if that doesn't look good in my head, then uh, we'll, we'll try something more drastic. I'm kind of an, an impatient painter and how that manifests itself uh, sometimes is I will, when I kind of get to this stage of the painting, I will just use um, like the brightest silver I have and the darkest shadow I have and kind of just pop back and forth. Um, and generally speaking, that probably isn't a good idea because you're just going to obliterate like your entire midtone. Um, so I wouldn't do that if I were you. Okay, I think the still is looking bad. And I think the reason why is because I have a shadow right here and then a single edge highlight and then another shadow right there. And I think having two shadows right next to each other kind of just looks a little bad. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna push the highlight a little bit more toward the top here and then push the shadow maybe like down like a millimeter uh, or two. I mean, obviously not a millimeter, but you know, a little bit further down. So let's do that. I'm gonna grab some of this darker silver, start to paint up into this area. Painting on top of paint that is wet because I am impatient. Uh, I'm gonna dry this real quick with a hairdryer. If I stay in frame and in focus for the entire time, that will be a modern miracle. Okay, I have a little shadow area right in there. I'm liking it, it's looking nice. Um, let's try to strengthen it um, with some abyssal blue, just straight up. I'm going to glaze from either side, um, pushing the paint toward where I want it to end up. So in this case, the shadow right there in the middle. It's also worth mentioning that sometimes you want a shadow that is a little bit less intense. So maybe this one right here 
isn't going to be as intense as other shadows across the miniature. Um, and that would add interesting variety to the mini. Right now, I'm kind of just holding the model a little bit further away from me, uh, just to get a sense of how I'm, how I'm going here. Uh, sometimes it's uh, really easy to be super critical of yourself when you're staring at the model that's like super close to you. So when you give it maybe like a couple feet of separation, you can uh, begin to see your model with different eyes. And so I'll do that intermittently throughout the painting process, just kind of see where I'm at. Okay. That ain't looking too bad. Let's start to uh, introduce some shadow in other parts of the axe, and then maybe that'll help um, the other parts look a little bit more finished and complete. And so I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking this part of the axe will do. We'll do next, and I want this very tip here to be silver. This is where the uh, specular highlight would uh, exist. And if you don't know what a specular highlight is, make sure to check out my video about non-metallic metal. That'll kind of like explain that whole process. But essentially, it's the point on a shiny reflective object where the light is reflecting into you, the viewer's eyeballs. Um, so you will see this when you're looking at a lake on the top of little uh, ripples. You'll see little bright sparkly lights. That is a specular highlight. You'll see it on all, on all sorts of things all the time. Uh, you, you'll see it without even realizing it. I want to make sure that all of these pock marks have a nice round shape at the bottom of them. Uh, it really is going to sell uh, the, the look quite a bit. And so now I'm going to come in and just kind of give a nice little shadow below the uh, the pock marks that it, at least I can see. Uh, not a shadow, a highlight, my bad. This is the problem with trying to paint and talk at the same time. You might notice that I'm not like doing a great job at like rinsing my brush, um, like while I'm moving in between various colors. And that is, uh, that is intentional. Uh, I am just uh, painting quickly. I'm kind of a, a fast painter in that I am impatient and I don't like to wait around um, for things like rinsing my brush off if it isn't the most important thing. And because I'm not going to paint any more of this miniature, um, I'm not afraid of getting like silver mixed in my abyssal blue and other parts of the model. So just so you know. I've been focusing on the axe head for a while here. Let's start to uh, focus on the other parts of the axe as well. Give some love to them. Um, kind of concerned that I have too much paint on the tip of my brush right now. Sometimes when you edge highlight and you have an, a little thick chonker on the end of your brush, um, that thick chonker can uh, telegraph really easily to uh, the edge highlight. The thicker your chonker on your paintbrush, the thicker your edge on your edge highlight, okay? That's, that's the basic rule of thumb here. Thick chonk, bad. Unless you want thick chonk, then okay. That was nice. I liked how that kind of cleaned up the uh, the highlight and the shape of that object a little bit. I'm going to sneak some more of this abyssal blue and silver mixture up into here just because I think it's a little bit too much dark abyssal blue and I want to kind of fix that a little bit. There's a little bit of a detail right here. Um, I'm going to just pop it with uh, some of this bright silver right on top of it. Um, that is just for intentionality. Um, if there is a detail there, I want to be intentional about it and I want to highlight and shade it very, very nicely. I don't want it to like half highlight and shade it. I want to be very intentional with how I'm painting this model. That is how you get a very nice clean look. When someone looks at your model and they're kind of like, is that what I think it is? I'm not totally sure. You don't want that thought. You want people to be like, oh, that's obviously this. This artist made this choice. I can tell. Everything makes sense. At least in my world, that's what I'm shooting for. Again, I just put some edge highlights below the pock marks on this spiky thing. Um, and then in the name of intentionality, uh, I am going to put some of this dark abyssal blue in the pockmarks on this specky thing.
Very cool. And then I'm also going to... Um, I'm going to push some Abyssal Blue all the way up to the top of this spike. And I know I'm running over my highlight right now, and that's okay. I do not mind at the moment. Um, I just want to recover some of that max darkness shadow right at the tip. And then I'm going to come back with, hopefully, a much more accurate edge highlight after I dry this and make sure I don't smear the paint. If we're trying to edge highlight in a circumstance like that, um, and the paint is still wet, I'm not going to get the definition that I'm looking for. Uh, so yeah, I want to dry just to make sure. Uh, we're going to make sure we have a very small amount of paint on our brush. And we do that by getting paint in our brush and then twisting it off a little bit. Um, and then we're going to just barely touch the model. Ugh, that might have been a bit too much. The less pressure you have, the less your bristles spread and the thinner your line is going to be. That is how it works. I want a feather touch when you're making really, really, really thin lines. Okay, that wasn't perfect. Now when you're cutting super thin lines, I'm going to push my brush so now it's uh, razor sharp in one dimension. And I'm going to see if I can sneak some paint up here because I didn't do the greatest job with my edge highlights. So now we're going to look into a plan B, which is carving in a shadow. I mean, I suppose it looked okay. That wasn't terrible. I think the shadow went a little bit too far down on this half of the spike. So we'll kind of bring it back in. Ooh, this is hard. As you can see, painting is very iterative in nature and I have now gone back and forth on the tip of this axe I don't know three times just trying to get the exact kind of thinness of line that I want and I think actually at the moment I'm actually struggling against the paint getting a little bit too thin uh, so I said it was stable and it is stable um, you can see that the paint isn't splitting at all but I think the paint is getting a little bit too hydrated to the point where I'm not getting the exact definition that I want with my edge highlight. I'm not getting the control I want with this paint that I know it's capable of. Like you see, I just got a tiny bead of paint on the tip of my brush with this new paint. And I don't think I'd be able to do the same thing with this uh, thinner paint over here that's been sitting on my palette. And that paint is still usable for 95% of what I'm doing on this axe head. Uh, but for this one job, it is, uh, inadequate. And that's definitely a thing you kind of develop a feeling for over time, so don't feel like you couldn't do something very similar. I don't know, the shadows this looks a little uh just a little messy. Reintroduce that abyssal blue. Some of this darker steel color. I always appreciate how easily TMM paints blend. This is also a very tiny thing, so that's another reason why it's blending pretty simple. Um, but TMM paints, since they're so shiny, kind of obscure a lot of potential blending issues. And so they kind of always just look a little bit nice. So that makes it easy. I'm gonna dry this again. Let's try again. That's working nicer. One thing to consider is um, if you want super nice edge highlights, especially on details like this, um, sometimes you can uh, 
sharpen this detail with an exacto knife to get those edges really razor sharp. Uh, and what I mean by that is I, I would run my exacto blade along this edge, scraping up and then scraping up and then scraping up, and that would make the edge really, really sharp, and that would make the edge highlight that much thinner. Okay, yeah, I like that. I think it looks nice. Now, I think next here, what we'll do is we'll just uh, start to adjust some of these shadows up in here. Kind of just pushing paint around. I didn't like how I pushed shadow up close against the main shaft of the axe here, so I put some paint back in there. If you enjoy this kind of content, you'll definitely enjoy my painting live stream. I even painted more than this same boner boy. I'm live on Twitch every Tuesday from 1 to 4 p.m. CST, and if you miss the streams, you can find them on Miniac's Backlog, my VOD channel. I'll have links to all this stuff down in the description below. One important thing is we don't have much of a recessed shade around these bolts, uh, or whatever they are, nuts, nail heads, something. Um, so I'm going to paint a little something something around each one and undoubtedly I am going to get some abyssal blue on top of um, the bolt heads, nail heads, screw heads, whatever they are. Uh, and then after I make that mistake, I'll come back in with some more of that um, silver paint just to paint these the heads of these things. That was a bit too much paint on my brush. Not enough control. And this way, each of these little heads is going to be nice and picked out from the background of silver and blue with their nice little recess shade. This thing seems to be angular. It's not uh, cylindrical. And so I'm going to try to paint it like that. I probably shouldn't have done the recess shading on the bolts and then what I'm doing right now because the odds that I mess up right now and have to redo some recess shading, pretty high. I had a line that was forming along the middle of this like ridge and I didn't like that line. I, th I thought it was too stark. Um, I want there to be a line because the thing has an edge on it, but I don't want there to be like a, an abyssal blue dark line immediately next to my edge highlight. And so I painted it over with a little bit of that dark silver. And now I'm going to come back with that silver, bright silver edge highlight and I'm going to paint that recess back in. Again, at any point in this process where you're like, this is good enough for what I want, you can just stop. I'm kind of a lunatic, and so I'm going to keep painting. I had a bright highlight right here, and I'm kind of just pulling it down right on top of this shaft thing of his axe. You might also ask why I'm not like circling the entirety of each pockmark. And I feel like if you were to circle each pockmark with silver paint, it's just a little bit too, it's a little bit too obvious. Um, when the viewer can begin to see the tools of, you know, the artist, I think that's when it's kind of like, yeah, you're kind of messing up. Um, you don't really want people to recognize what you're doing. You kind of want them just to get lost in the model in a way. Um, so if someone's like, oh, that's dry brushing, I can tell you, you kind of messed up or, oh, that's so-and-so, 
um, you don't want them to be talking about the the method of what you're doing. You want them to be talking about how good it looks. Um, and so whenever someone's like obviously distracted by your painting choices, that is uh, generally not a good thing. Also, if you're like a beginner mini painter and you're watching this video and like, what the f is this guy saying? I'm sorry. This is maybe a little bit more advanced mini painting. That, or I'm just talking on my ass. One of the two. Okay. Well, we, we, we bopped away from doing this shadow a long time ago with the intention of seeing if painting the rest of the axe head would make this look like it was uh, more appropriately placed. And I feel like I'm pretty happy with it. I think I'm going to try to drop some uh, abyssal blue. And more of these pock marks. There is some in there right now, but I kind of want a little bit more. All right, cool. That's looking nice. Let's up the ante a little bit. I'm gonna take some pure black here from Vallejo, and I'm going to just really darken some of these recesses, but just like a tiny amount. This is that thing where people are like asking for feedback and people say more contrast. This is that step that you aren't doing. And it doesn't need to be insane. Um, like it just needs to cover like a very small portion of the shadow of your model for it to look like it's making a huge difference. <sighs> this tip is the bane of my existence. I don't like it when a lot of shadow showing around each of these little uh, bolts. I want there to be a very, very clean circle of shadow around it. Because this detail isn't cylindrical and it's like flat planes, I'm bringing back in some of the shadow. Uh, so like a edge highlight appears in the middle of this uh, kind of angular thing. But not as strong of one as we had last time. Okay, I think that looks pretty awesome. So we're gonna do two last steps here. And these are just entirely optional steps. I really like Tamiya Clear products. I think they're the bee's knees. And so I kind of look for an excuse to use them whenever I can. And in this case, we're gonna use X23, which is clear blue. It's a very glossy, uh, unique kind of acrylic product. Um, I'm gonna thin it with some Tamiya X20A, which is the thinner you're supposed to use for Tamiya paints. And then we're gonna kind of glaze it into the shadows. It's gonna cool the, the silver in a fun way. And then we're gonna do one last step after that. All right, I'm gonna dip my paintbrush in the thinner first, cause I don't wanna get blue in the thinner. You can think of this kind of like as a glaze. And I know it doesn't make any sense. I know people say the shadow of TMM should be matte and not glossy, but I just think this really makes the silver pop in a fun way. So I'll get some in my brush kind of wick it off a bit, and then we'll kind of just play with it a bit. Kind of pushing it toward the shadow from the mid-tone. 
Um, it, is, it isn't, it isn't going to do much to the shadow because the shadow is so dark in the first place. Um, but it is going to do something to the silver because the silver is bright. And so the, the brightness is going to take on a color a lot better than, uh, than a dark shadow would. Kind of just painting all in this middling area here. Uh, maybe I can get it to look a little bit different than the rest of the axe head, uh, like in this area right here. If uh, a different portion of it is this kind of fun blue color. Kind of hard, again, to make uh, a flat axe head look interesting, uh, just because... It's like a mirror, essentially. Uh, it's not a very interesting subject to paint. I'm beginning to wonder if we're getting a little bit too aggressive with uh, this shadow here. I'm a little concerned about that, actually. And so I lied. I said there was two more steps. We're just going to reintroduce some mid-tone silver um, right uh, in that area just to kind of like calm down a bit because we're getting a little too crazy here you know we gotta relax and also try not to knock over my x28 thinner that i am not putting a cap on of course now we uh we lost that blue so we'll just bring a smidge back after I dry this out. Cool. So with that process, we kind of ran over some of our edge highlights a little bit. So we're going to do one last incredibly intense edge highlight with Molotow Liquid Chrome. Just right on the very edges of everything to make it just look like a mirror finish. Really kind of drive home that reflectiveness. Because I feel like a, a value of TMM is that it's going to do the shadows and highlights for you. So might as well let it do its job uh, with some super, super duper reflective uh, silver. And this stuff is not stable on my palette at all. Um, so I'm going to put it on the lid of my wet palette here, uh, using it kind of as a hard palette. Woo! Lord almighty! That is some... Silvery silver. Got a little bit of silver where I want a very dark shadow to be. So we'll have to fix that, but that is okay. The thicker you put this stuff down, the more chrome it's going to be. Um, and then the more you kind of spread it out, the more it kind of loses its luster. Um, so you can kind of use that to your advantage uh, if, you, uh, if you want to. Man, that's looking really nice on the edge over here. I think that looks super good. I'm going to add a bit more thicker blobs on this edge, just to kind of like give it a little bit of a chewed look. I love it, I love it. That is looking real nice. Okay. 
Okay. We're just about done. I just gotta fix up a little area that I messed up by adding some more shadow to an area that I covered with that silver Maltau bright highlight. And then I have to uh, make some more work for myself because I am a masochist. I wanted to also reintroduce an edge highlight. I kind of lost it on this axe head right here. Let's add a little bit more Molotov Chrome right to the very, 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 very tip here. Woo! All right, and that's it. That is a completed axe head in TMM. I think that is looking banging. We'll have some nice beauty shots here at the end so that you can see it close up and decide for yourself if you think it's banging. Well, what do you guys think? You think that process took too long? Do you think a portion of it was adequate, but not all of it was needed? Very often when I'm watching educational content on the internet, I will find some portion of that person's process that I like and I'll inherit it into my own. And that's what I suggest you do here. Maybe you were like, wow, that Molotov Chrome really worked as an edge highlight and I want to give that a shot. Or, wow, to me, the clear products are awesome. Or, oh, this, uh, this new AK Interactive Metal really sticks down when doing an edge highlight. It gives you a lot of accuracy. Maybe that is kind of what you're into. Um, you don't have to take all of my process. Uh, this is just what I like to do. You can take just some of it if you wanted to. If you guys like this kind of video where I am showing you the entire unedited process and giving you my stream of conscious thoughts, I have several other videos edited in this format. You can check out linked right now in the upper right hand corner of the screen, but also at the end of this video and in the description below. It's everywhere. You can't avoid it. Okay, watch them, please. If you guys like the channel and you want to support it, there are many ways to do that. All things linked down in the description below, mainly a Patreon campaign with a bunch of fun rewards like a Discord server where you and I can hang out any day of the week and chat about your miniature painting projects or how TMM is so much better than NMM. <laughs> you can also buy hobby tools and products that I recommend. All things linked down in the description are affiliate links and they give me a little extra kickback and no cost to you. Subscribe or die! And most importantly, don't forget to pay my minutes!